Okay, question number three. Which health-related adaptations to exercise persist after cessation of exercise? This is actually an interesting question. I thought about this for far too long because I because you want to be correct, right? I don't want to give a flippant answer and be like, oh, I missed this. <clears throat> my, my take on this is the body is dynamic all of the time where it is alive. <laughs> like it is adapting to what you are doing all of the time, whether that's High, a high use, high throughput situation or a low use, low throughput situation. So the, so if you're on bed rest, you are adapting to that. And if you are, you know, very active meeting or exceeding the physical activity guidelines, you're adapting to all of that. Which is effectively the, uh, skeletal muscle fibers have multiple nuclei and that's where all the proteins are made. That's where all the DNA, uh, is stored, et cetera. And so even when you stop exercising, you retain the increased number of myonuclei uh, that is generated via training. That's one of the mechanisms of hypertrophy, for example. As you start training, you develop more of these myonuclei, they make more protein, muscle gets bigger. That's one of the mechanisms. When you stop training, the muscle gets a little smaller, but you retain all these myonuclei. And one of the thoughts uh, behind muscle memory is that once you restart training, you can call upon all those myonuclei that you've uh, developed over time, and then your muscle psh, swells back up uh, in pretty rapid fashion, much faster than it originally took you to get bigger. That is a the theory. There are there's some nuance there as far as how long does that persist? Is that the real mechanism? And so I, I don't know that I would, you know, write that in in stone and hang my hat on it. But when I think about other adaptations, things like strength, uh, particularly like neurological adapt uh, uh, adaptations to strength, other uh, structural adaptations, so tendon stiffness, muscle stiffness, things of that nature, muscle penation angle, all these things. Uh, when I think about cardiorespiratory fitness, all of those things are dynamic, and I don't think that they just stay there. So the, the one we have evidence for, and, and once again, there's some nuance to this is really bone mineral density. Uh, there's a decent number of papers that talk about essentially through your adolescent years to early twenties is when most of your bone mineral density accrues. Now there's probably a little bit of a chicken or egg conversation there about how much of that is the fact that this 15 years ago when these studies were coming out was the most active period of most individuals' lives. And I would be willing to bet if you took a runner in their 20s and turned them into a lifter in their 30s, you're still going to see changes out of that. And how long does that hang? But there is, I would say, moderate to decent evidence that the more you do early on for bone health, the better your slope of decline is later in life. Yeah. You're going to start from a higher peak the, and then, and that's going to be protective in some way in and of itself. And if you maintain any like activity, you can, it's almost like maintenance, uh, to, to kind of slow the decline, but you're still adapting to whatever you're doing. It's not like it just stays there and doesn't change again. The body is dynamic. And so I don't know of any physiological adaptation that you get from exercise that will not change after you stop exercising. Well, but if you look at this question, there's kind of layers to it because it's like, well, how long after cessation or, you know, or like how much are we considering to be an adaptation? Because, you know, if you train and you increase your strength by 300% and you drop to 250% after eight weeks of cessation, uh, you're still better off than someone who never trained. Yeah, there are a few studies on like D1 football players where they go like preseason, they're hitting it hard, do like a one arm squat and bench, test that, and then they don't actually lift weights for the next eight weeks, I believe is the, the study duration. And then they test their back squat and, and bench press, and they've lost, you know, less than 5% on average. And, and it's like, cool, that's eight weeks. But what about at 80 weeks? You know, like you, if you extend the timeline long enough, you're, you're still maybe better off than where you started. And I, I, I probably would agree that that is a likely prediction like that's likely to happen but uh man it's it just yeah the timeline timeline's gonna matter for sure here mm -hmm.